Hello all, my name is Sik, how to use the Eden 3D Editor. So I figured I would make um, a small example mission, show you how exactly you can create your own um, steal the car mission. So I've made two so far, one of them is on the island of Stratis and one of them is on the island of Altis. Uh, right now I'm on Altis, I selected Neochori to be my mission location. Um, because it's a relatively small t or a relatively small town, but still big enough to hide your vehicle in. Um, so you have to do some searching because I don't want to have um, just one position for the cart to be in. I want more locations. I want them to be random. I want the player start to be random as well. Um, how you do that is actually relatively easy. Um, yeah, so let's begin. Um, we're gonna play as the the blue four side this time around. I made one for blue four once before, I think, and I've made one for the AAF. Um, yeah, no, actually, I've made it for CSAT and I've made it for the AF. So this time it's going to be blue four. Um, I like to be the combat lifesaver because you're gonna be alone, and in this case, it helps so you can heal yourself. I'm just gonna. Um, place myself down right here um, then of course I need a car so with the new asset search feature I can find whatever I need but in this case I'm pretty close and I know I know what I want so I'm just gonna press cars when I put down a hunter vehicle and because it was close I actually got grouped to the to the vehicle because there's a driver inside if I drag the driver outside you see I'm actually grouped to him I don't want him here so I'm just gonna delete him create an empty vehicle All right so the first thing you want to do in any mission is to have a look around see where you want everything to go I haven't actually done that yet um, but this looks like a reasonably good location for the car to be so I'm just gonna drag it over here and the player can start somewhere outside of the village I'm just gonna put him down here for now just um, make it easier to keep working with him um, yeah so once you figured out what location you want to use, what you want, want to do with your mission, what you want to do is you want to make sure that all of your objectives work first. right? If you cannot get your objectives to work properly, then it's a waste of time dressing up the mission. So that's what, I'm going, that's what I want to do first. So to make this work, we're going to need to do several things. And the first thing is we need to give the, the car a name. So I double click the, the hunter and with variable name, I click there and I'm gonna call him car one okay that's it that's all we need um, the player is actually do doesn't actually need to have a variable name I'm going to call for him in a, in a script but you can just use this and that's it but if you want you can call him a name so I'm gonna call him GA because that's what I've been using in some of the other missions um, so GA is my name and also I want to have some dialogue in the mission, right? I want to have some radio messages. Um, I don't. If you don't give them um, a radio call sign, they will just show up as Alpha One Two, Bravo Five Six, or something like that. Just a random name, and it doesn't look very good. So, if I, once my player character says something, I want him to have uh, a proper name in the side channel. So what I have, I have to write down here is um, I wrote a little list so I can. I can pick this set group ID bracket. Um, not sure what that's called in English. Um, let's think of a name um, Armstrong from Operation Flashpoint. And then another bracket. And then we press um, the semicolon. All right, the semicolon is important here if you want to have multiple lines of code. This needs to be in between so to um, separate the little bits of code, basically. All right. So that's that done. Um, now we want to have, like, we will need to have the player drive the car somewhere. So he's going to find the car in the city, but then he needs to drive somewhere, right? And once he's driven to this other location, he's safe, and um, the mission should be ended. So. Yeah, let's just say 
the player needs to drive the vehicle to this little compound here, right? So what we need next is a trigger. The trigger can be variable sizes. I have some, some extra ones because I have the um, Eden Enhanced mod installed at the moment, but you can adjust this to whatever you want, really. I'm just gonna pick this one, place it down. As you can see, it's quite small. I want it to be a little bit bigger. So I can just open it up and say the size. These are the axes of the size. So that looks better. All right, so now I want to this trigger to check if the player has arrived in its location. So I open it up. Um, I can give it a name. So in this case, I'm going to say vehicle presence one. In the condition, or actually first, the activation is important because it needs to check for a blue four unit, right? So the type is just none. Activation is blue four, present. You could also say not present, but that's like if you want to kill all the enemies in one area, you want it to be clear, then you use this. In this case, I want my player to be present. Okay. If I leave it like this, any blue four unit will actually trigger the, um, the will actually activate the trigger. So what I want is for only the player to um, to activate the trigger. So what I want to do for this is I want to type in vehicle player in this list semicolon and this basically it you can if you just put in player in this list um, there is a chance that the game does not register you if you are actually inside the car if you put in vehicle in front of the name of whatever whatever the name of the unit you want to check for basically is um, it will check if that unit is in the vehicle or outside the vehicle, but it will trigger no matter what, as long as the player is inside this trigger area, right? And this would be okay, but actually I want to have the car in there as well, right? So the semicolon can go. I want to have an extra parameter for this trigger. I'm going to press this two times, and then I'm going to say car one in this list. Because the car is already a vehicle, you don't really have to check for that. The car cannot actually be inside another car. So vehicle car one would be redundant. It doesn't work. Um, so now this trigger checks for the presence of the, um, of the player and of car one. Right. So in on activation, you want something to happen here. Right. So in this case, I want the player to say something. So I can say GA which is the name that I gave my character, side chat. Phew, I made it. And that's it. I press OK. And now I can test it. I'm not going to actually drive all the way over here. So for now, I'm just going to drag this stuff all the way over here. Um, right. Just going to rotate this a little bit get the player character here preview so now once I drive the car into the trigger area my character should say something there we go Phew, I made it right so we're gonna return to the Eden editor um, I'm gonna show you one more time I'm gonna put the car inside As you can see, nothing is happening. No, no text is showing up because only car one is in the trigger area and not the player. So it, once I walk inside into the trigger zone, right, let's see. Ah, there we go. So in this case, I have to actually be in the, in the vehicle for it to to activate. But because I'm always going to be in the vehicle when I get here, it's okay. Alright, so, next off, this is working, so that's okay. Um, just going to place this back. Now, we need something to happen as well when the vehicle gets destroyed, because this is your primary objective, right? If it gets destroyed, you should fail the mission. 
So I'm just gonna have an empty trigger with no radius, place it down here, open it up, give it a name so I can check in the list later on. Vehicle destroyed one. Right? And in condition, I don't have to do anything with activation. In the condition, I type the following Alive Car One. G A side chat. Ah, oh, crap. The car got destroyed. Okay. So, now we have this. Or actually, I need to do something more. Um, because actually, I do have to do something in the activation. Is it? It's not activation. It's type. So, at type, this is fill the scenario. Right? So now when I destroy this car by accident or on purpose, you know, whatever, if an enemy destroys the car, um, this will show up. Um, f so for this I'm just gonna test it as an AT soldier. Assistant missile, no. Is it? Missile specialist, that's what I want. Right, preview. Gonna get my Titan. <laughs> okay, that went over it. Um, really? Come on. Okay, maybe if I try like this. There we go. And because there was no uh, delay, no timer, this actually happened straight away. We're going to expand on this. This is actually not going to be the loose scenario uh, activation. Um, I'm just gonna remove this, set it back to none, close this trigger, add another one. So in this trigger, I'm gonna call it vehicle destroyed two. And I want this one to activate only after the vehicle destroyed one trigger has been activated. But I want to do that after maybe five seconds. So down here I'm gonna change all of these values to five. And then in condition I'm going to I'm going to write trigger activated vehicle dis destroyed one. All right. So what that does is basically it it checks for the first first trigger to be activated, and then it's going to wait five seconds and activate this one. Okay. And then for this type, I'm going to set this one to lose. Right, you can make this as long as you want. If you want, I c if I wanted to, I could make a third one, like a third trigger, turn this one into a, an HQ um, response. So he can say, oh, you fucked up, you're going to get in trouble, and then end the mission in the third one. You know, that's completely possible in the same way that I just set this one up. You know what, actually, yeah, let's, let's just do that, just for fun. So, none, on activation, HQ, side, chat, you messed up, son. You're going to be in trouble. Alright. So now I just select this. Control C, Control V to copy it. Open the new one up. Change this to 3. Change that one to 2. Remove all this. Oh. One. And then set this one. Ah, sorry. Set this one to lose. Right, and this one also waits for five seconds. So now, um, I kind of want a different, um, yeah, just rifleman AT. I think that's the one I want, because the other one was a guided um, launcher, and I didn't really lock in onto a target. I want the PCML, which is just like a straight line uh, rocket. So, oh crap, the car got destroyed. There you go. Now five seconds later, we should see HQ. Or actually, no, I forgot something. We don't actually have an HQ yet, right? So, I don't know what this is exactly, this newsfeed, oh, okay. That's something from online, I think. So now we need an HQ character because my character actually um, emitted the first uh, radio, radio call sign 
I now need um, an HQ character. So I'm just gonna get an officer. I'm just gonna hide him in the woods over here. Open up his properties. Give him the name HQ, because that's what I called for in the trigger. And then I'm just gonna this set group ID. Oh wait, bracket HQ. And then end up with a semicolon. So now, this guy's line should show up in the chat, right? So, we've got a win scenario, we've got an end scenario. Um, let's just go back, or actually only we, have a, we only have a working fail state. So let's just go back to the trigger over here, which is the one that should finish our mission, right? So, I already set this one up a bit. I'm going to create another trigger because if you get punished for screwing up you should be rewarded for doing well so this one is called vehicle present one I'm gonna call this one vehicle present two and then oh, in condition right trigger activated vehicle present one right timer value is back to five HQ side chat man my typing skills are off today well done soldier I knew you had it in you right end up with a semicolon just because let's be meticulous about this um, copy this paste it call this one vehicle present free call for number two get this to be gone and now on activation here to actually finish the mission you could call for it through this but actually I'm just gonna do it a little bit differently because I want um, a special animation kind of thing to happen at the end well, it's not actually a special animation thing but it's it's an animated screen basically it's how all the official Bohemia interactive missions end and I want the same thing so what I'm going to write here is and one call bis fnc low dash and mission so right now it's just going to call for a, the default end but later on i'm going to take you through the mission folder and explain to you some of the extra files that you need to make the mission work properly right and that's where i'm going to describe a more detailed version of end one but that's just for later on. For now, this is okay. This works. Okay, so let's save the game. So now we have the player, right? We're calling for the for the car to be alive or not. And if it's destroyed, then the mission fails. If we drive it over to that end, the mission succeeds, right? So that's all good. Now all we really need to do is... Um, make sure that the car ends up in random spots on the map okay and the player as well because that would be the coolest thing that allows you for a lot of replayability um, so let's select a few places where the car could be right so this courtyard here looks quite cool I could maybe put in it put the car in here so I'm going to open up the map by pressing M zoom in because this actually this is actually how you place down markers and markers is what we need okay so for now I'm just gonna place a simple dot and a little bit later on when I explain the init file I'm going to actually make this marker invisible because I don't want the player to see this marker because otherwise he could use that as a guidance tool to find the car you know I want him to just walk around the, the area and just find it down by himself so dot one I'm just going to give this one a name car spawn one okay so that's one location um, I already said that this would be a relatively cool location so car spawn two right um, let's see so we have one there we have one here or oh, one here actually I think not this one 
So now, let's see. You know what? This looks like a cool location as well. It's walled off. There's an opening here. So, let's see. You can actually see the camera icon showing what you're looking at. So now, uh, another dot. We're going to call this one car spawn free to make it consistent. All right. So now what you need to do is um, go to your car, right click it, hover over connect, then set, ah, oh, it actually has a random start here. I've never actually tried this. It used to be that you could group this together or sync it to a marker, right? So I'm just gonna try that, it should still work. Sync to. Huh, okay. You know what? Let me figure this out. All right. So um, you just go to connect, and set random start actually works the same way as as the sync two. Um, all you do is you, you press this. You see a little line following the um, the marker, and then you click on the marker, right? So I'm gonna do this again because that's only one start. I want this to be located is this one as well and then the last one sync to um, oops, no not sync to connect set random start that's what I want right so now that we have this set up this vehicle can actually end up in um, all the in either in one of those three locations right so I can do the same thing for the player um, the important part here is of course that the player has to be at a safe location right you want him to be in a spot where you know there are not going to be any enemies and you have to work to m be able to um, make them stay away from there um, so that's very close I don't want him to start here um, Let's see, this is also too close, because you could walk in a straight line and drive away if it spawns there. I don't want that, actually. Um, you know what? Um, I can start the player off in the junkyard here. I'm going to move the officer somewhere else later on. Okay. Um, so go to the map. Um, place a little dot. Um, let's call this player spawn one. Okay. While I'm at it, um, oh, I don't want to open that. I want to move him. So let's just move him into Laka, where I know I'm never going to be. Um, okay, so that's spawn one. Another location could be at the gas station right here. So we call that player spawn two. Um, and let's see. Where else do I want to put him? I don't want to put him here. I can't really put him at the sea because I don't how do, I don't know how to explain him being there. You know what? That's okay. I made my point, right? You know what what's going on here. So set random start. I'm gonna sync him up to this location. Set random start. And actually, this is quite cool because before it used to be the sync or the groups or the group um, tool that you would use. And the one downside of this was that every line had the same color. And this time around, the, this this is actually a different color than the group than the group tool or the sync tool. All right. So that's really cool. Um, now another thing that I want to do is. Um, I want some chat or like some radio message to be played when I get there, right? So 
Yeah. Let's have a look. I need to make a trigger in this area right here. Or actually, I, I can do it in the map. It's easier. I know the player will spawn on this, in this place. Open up the trigger. Um, start. I'm gonna call this one start one. Or actually, start one A. And the reason for that, I'll show you in a little bit. The activation is going to be blue four. I don't actually have to check for the player this time around because I know there's not going to be any other blue four units around, so I don't need to make it any more complicated than it is. And then on activation, HQ, side chat, you're in position 6. Now move into the town and find that car. HQ out. Right. And I want the player to be able to get his bearings just a little bit. So I don't want this message to be at the very start of the mission, so I'm just going to make a two second delay. Right. Actually, the player is not going to follow up on this. I just I want to call the other trigger from my secondary spawn to call that one start two, and then I wanted to follow it up with um, with a player response maybe, and and that's why I call this start one A. So then the next trigger here would be called start one B, start one C, etc. etc. But in this case, that's not really needed. So I'm just going to call it start one. I'm going to copy this move over to the gas station call it star 2 okay now here's another thing right I have two of these triggers now and the player could actually walk over to the secondary start and then this message would be displayed again even though maybe you're halfway through the mission we don't want that to happen so we're going to need to do something um, I'm just gonna save the mission real quick. I'm gonna need a little script. I'm going to be right back. Sorry about that. I didn't actually think we were going to use it at first, which was dumb. I should have written it down. But anyway, there we go. I'm gonna use the semicolon space, and to I want to dis or um, deactivate the other starting position trigger, right? So that if I walk over there after I start in one location it doesn't actually show me this mes message again. So to do that, since this is start 2, I'm gonna say start 1 set trigger statements and then I'm going to have to use the bracket false comma space and then use these two signs another space another two of those signs bracket semicolon okay so what this is going to do it's going to deactivate the um, other st other trigger once I spawn in this w if I spawn in this one right so for ease of use I'm just going to um, to copy this move over to the other marker semicolon paste and of course the one thing I do need to change is which one is going to get deactivated. So in this case, it's start two. All right. So now we've basically got a working mission. Except, of course, there are no enemies just yet. And um, we have to change that, of course. So what I want to do is... Um, I can use the group feature. Actually, or actually, this time around, they called it composition. So I can use compositions and get a big overview of a big group or a big selection of pre-made groups. In this case, since I am alone, I don't want to have too many people around. So at the f at the most, I actually would only want like um, a two-person patrol maximum, which you don't really have in here. So actually, I'm just going to go to the single units, um, find a regular rifleman, and now I have to just have a quick look at where I know the car might be. Right, so we know that there's the car. The car could potentially be here. 
so what I want to do is um, I want to put down a soldier right there he is actually underneath the car ah so yeah on the on the map the 2d map I saw that these were connected somehow but they you can actually walk around there so that's good so this guy um, I want him to have a buddy so they're just going to be two riflemen one of them should be a corporal just to be sure that he is the leader so now what I want to do is I want to have him patrol around this area where I know the car is going to be so I go to waypoints I select move and I place it down and if you hold down control which is that's really nice you hold down control you can place down multiple waypoints right so press control control back onto the street control and then for the final one I'm just gonna click once okay but if you just leave it like this they're just gonna run around so what I want to do with the first um, first waypoint right here at his feet I place it close to him because this means when he's this close the waypoint will activate immediately and it will basically give him the settings that I want him to use so I want him to be in just walking speed so I'm gonna set, say limited behavior is going to be safe so he think he's not inside he's not in a combat mode I don't want him to be careless because the, the thing with careless is let me just turn off the there we go I have a wind blower and it's getting kind of cold so you don't want the careless mode because careless as it says here it will not automatically switch into combat mode if he spots a threat it basically kind of makes the AI brain dead right there are reasons why you might want to use this um, helicopters would be a good example because helicopters they just continue flying and it's actually better to make them do combat landings which they will not do if they're in combat mode they will just stay up in the in the air try to engage the enemy for the most part but if you put them in careless mode they will ignore the enemy and just fly to wherever you need them to be but in case of the infantry I want him to be safe because as soon as he sees the player I want him to to react to that right so combat mode is um, you can also change this but I don't really need to all he needs is uh, to have the safe behavior speed mode set to limited and then I want the formation to be a column so that the other guy just follows him right I don't want him to walk off to the side or anything because he's walking in tight spaces I just want him to be in column mode so now he will follow his waypoints and he'll end up here right but then he'll stop because this point this is simply a waypoint, a move waypoint and we need to change this as well so we open it up and then we find this cycle function so now if I press cycle this basically means that he cycles back to the next available waypoint or to his starting location whichever is first right so if I select cycle press OK you can see there is now a little black line that r runs to the starting position but if I moved it closer to here it actually switches to the move either one is okay it doesn't really matter no. but yeah just leave it like this okay so now I'm just gonna select him and select the first waypoint control copy I'm going to move over here because I know the car can be here as well so I want to do the same thing here I'm gonna set him off in the corner here um, select this guy select the move waypoint and he cannot actually walk through here so what I he's going to have to do the long way around right I'm just gonna make a move over here move over here move over here and finish off close to your starting position and this actually should not be why is this loiter I never wanted that okay so this last one should be cycle I guess I pressed a button that I didn't or that I shouldn't have pressed loiter is actually not what we want we just want move so I'm just gonna quickly switch these around move and then the last one 
move. Okay. So he has a big area to patrol, right? It's not actually ideal. It's not really what you want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in another little guy. I'm just going to paste another um, little group of guys. But I don't need the last one, so I'm going to delete him. Um, so yeah, select him. Go to waypoints. Select move. Press here. And finish here. And then change this last one into cycle. Alright, so I'm going to continue doing this for a little bit so that you have enemies all throughout the town. You don't really need to see this. So I'll be back in just a second. So I've actually switched out of the editor for now because we have to take care of some important stuff outside of it. Um, without doing this stuff on the outside, um, there are some things that you will be missing once you actually publish the mission. And you can actually create a briefing in the game through modules and triggers and stuff like that. Um, but at the moment, um, I've always used the old way of doing things in Arma 2, so I'm just continue with doing what I know. Um, and this is the thing, in the Arma editor there is a lot of different ways to do whatever you need to do. You know, sometimes I figure out one way of doing things and then a week later I'll find out a completely different way of achieving the same goal. And it might actually be a more straightforward method or maybe not, you know, but there's a lot of ways to do things. For me, I've always used uh, the briefing.sqf, and so I've continued doing that. Um, so, to get to your mission folder, once it's saved, it will be in Documents, Armor Free, or Armor Free Other Profiles in my case, your profile name, Missions, and then the name of your mission. And you'll be greeted with just the mission.sqm when you first um, save the mission. This has all the information of every single unit that has been placed down, all the waypoints and all that kind of stuff. So this is a file you don't want to mess with. Okay, you're just going to leave this alone. Um, but all the other uh, folders and and items here are things that I've copied over from existing missions that I've already made, and all of them do an important part. The load screen .paa is actually one thing you don't really have to be concerned about. It's actually a custom image that will be shown during the loading screen once you get into the mission. Okay, I think you can also use JPEG for it. I'm not entirely sure, but th this is always what I've used and it always worked for me. Um, the init.sqf is very important. It This is what allows you to call for the briefing to be executed. This this file basically gets read before the mission even starts, okay? Um, in it, I call for the briefing to be executed because I want that to happen before the mission starts. And in it, inside of it, I also call for the, the markers that we have placed down to be made invisible. Okay, so let, I'll just open it up and see what's inside. So exec.vm briefing.sqf, this is what executes the briefing before the mission starts, okay? Then all these lines under here are basically, each one makes a marker invisible. Okay, you can actually use this in a trigger in the editor as well, but the downside of that is that triggers only get executed after the mission has already started. So, car spawn 1, car spawn 2, car spawn 3, etc. Um, if you try to make them invisible through a trigger, they will actually still show up in the, in the briefing screen. I don't want that to happen because that way the player could already see where the car might be. So in this case I call inside the init.sqf for them to be made invisible. And um, yeah, I have to remind myself I actually have to create an extra marker to show where the player is going to go, right? It's quite important. Um, next up, description ext. Um, I'll open up this as well and I use this for basically four different things okay there's more stuff you could do with it but for me this is enough um, the first section here is all the information that will get shown at the start of a mission so in the loading screen it will show you who the author of the mission is in this case it's me 
the name of the mission, which I've written down as Steal the Car, Neo Chori. And then the description of the mission, which shows up underneath this, Steal the Car Back from the Enemy. And then it calls to the load screen, loadscreen.paa, which I talked about a little bit earlier. You can actually remove this line if you don't want to have a custom image, but of course a custom image looks a lot better. Okay. Um, next part is the CFG debriefing part, right here. So in the trigger that was going to execute the successful ending of the mission, I described an end one, right? And I, was, I said I was going to go into further detail about it. And this is where you actually do that. Um, so end one is being called for here. The title is mission completed. You can leave this as it is. Um, the description is something you have to customize for every mission, of course. So in this case, you successfully retrieved the car. Good job. And you could customize uh, the picture, picture color and all that kind of stuff, but you don't really have to mess with all that. Okay. You can also call for multiple endings, you know, if you want to create a campaign, for example, that has multiple endings, um, based on the ch yeah, multiple endings based on the choices that player has made before in the mission. You know, you can call for different endings depending on who is still alive, um, what choice the player made, all that kind of stuff. And you can call for the different endings here as well. In that case, you would just like copy this, um, paste it there, mission completed. And maybe you want to have an optional officer in there okay so and and killed the enemy officer just I'm just I'm not gonna put this in the game but you could make something like this happen you know so next part CFG sounds this is where you describe all the um, all the custom sounds that you record so if you want to have conversations happening you have to record them as an a dot OGG file and you put those OGG files inside either the sound folder or the music folder if it's custom music. But then they have to be referenced in the description.ext, otherwise you will not see them in game. And you cannot call for them. If you actually try to call for them, it will give you an error if it's not described here. Okay. So it's pretty basic. You have your different um, sections for each sound. So all this describes one sound, GA1, the name. It's actually, this is, if you ins describe it in a mission like this, this is actually how the sound will show up in the trigger effects. So every trigger has an option to trigger an effect. You can start music or sounds from there, and you can find this in a drop-down list. And this will be the name it will show up as, okay? And finally, um, GA1.OGG, this is the actual file and where it can be found, okay? So you do this for however many sounds you have and however many sounds you need. In this case, I have quite a few, um, but all the way at the bottom here, I also have a CFG music file, which is different from all the regular music stuff. Okay. So it works the same way, except you put the music file inside the music folder. And that's really all you need to know for now. Okay. The, um, actually, the only other thing I can explain here is, um, if you want to have 3D sound, you need to mess around with this right here. dB plus zero is actually the decibel value. Okay, so if you think or if you think that the sound is too too soft, it doesn't play the correct volume, you can increase the decibel value here by say ah oh, plus 150 decibels. That's blow our ears out. Okay, but if you want the sound to be 3D, it actually has to have a negative decibel value. Okay, and it will look like this. So dB minus 10 or minus whatever, but you actually get rid of the spaces in between. I don't know exactly why that is. That's just the way it works. Okay. But in our case, um, I just want the regular stuff. So I'll just leave it like this. Okay. That's all you need to know for the description.ext. But then finally, the briefing.sqf and this is where of course all the briefing information is stored so I'll, I'll just open this up I've already written a little bit um, so 
what's important here is you have the four different sides are described and this is important for multiplayer because in multiplayer you want to have different briefings for different factions of course so in this case it's a single player mission i only play as blue four only a blue four player needs the briefing so all i need to do is add some stuff here okay now in this case there will be free entries so or free records diary records um they all show up under the same tab because you can create multiple tabs and then tabs within that tab basically but in this case all, i want all of them to be under diary in the same place and so these three these three right here they will combine into one tab okay but then these three right here they will actually be different tabs inside this one tab okay so i have some several i have several little things um diary of david armstrong our character this is the title that will show up and then this is the description inside of it okay so this you can change this you just remove this and t replace it with whatever else you want um it's very basic and um, all of these files I will actually upload this somewhere so people can download this example mission see how everything is set up and copy whatever they need um, all the, the little codes and scripts I used for the triggers I will copy and paste them into the YouTube description but um, this is really quite basic right um, the only the last thing I have to say about this is the um, the order in which this is placed is important okay so in this case the diary of david armstrong is at the top inside this file but in the game it will actually show up at the at the bottom okay mission briefing will be in the center and situation will be on top so it is basically reversed from in game it will be reversed from what you see here okay it's an important thing to remember all right so last up the briefing.html I'm not sure if you still need this because in my case the briefing.html doesn't actually have any information in it at all so if I open it up with the um, yeah just open it up with um, Internet Explorer I guess it doesn't actually say anything it doesn't have any information okay the only reason it's here is because in previous games I think it's armor 1 probably armor 2 as well you needed this file to make the briefing.sqf show up properly in the game now this might have changed for armor 3 but this is something I've always had in every mission I've made and it doesn't have any harmful effects to have it in there so I always just keep it I have to check myself I actually forgot one important thing inside the briefing.sqf okay and that's references to markers so I open this up um, I copy this bit from an, an another briefing file I have um, so in this case I might want to want to reference um, Neo Chori as a link so once you press this link it takes you to the marker on the map all right so what we need to do there is I'm going to just um, remove Neo Chori for right right now and paste in the original marker link so this is a little little bit of code that will reference to the um, to the um, to the marker on the map basically so marker name equals abdera this is the the name you actually gave the marker in the editor then the next bit abdera here is actually the name of um of this is how what, whatever you want the link to to read as okay so in this case i have to change all this to new chori and this one as well Now, I don't actually have a NeoChori marker yet, so that's what I'm going to have to create next, but we'll get to that. Um, so by the time, if you get into the briefing, by adding this, you will have a clickable link that will take you to the spot of this marker. All right, let's move on. So I'm back in the editor. I'm going to create the um, marker for, the, for Neo Chori. okay? So I want, let's see, uh, you know what? Let's make an, uh, a dot 
as well. And I'll just call it Neo Chori. Okay. I, I don't actually put in text right now because if I put in text, this will show up on the map as well. So if I type in Neo Chori, it will say Neo Chori two times. But since it already says Neo Chori here, I don't really need to do that. Um, so this will be blank. And then it will just be a dot. Right? And actually, I'm going to jump back into the um, into the init.sqf later on to make sure that this one is invisible as well. Um, and finally, I need a marker over here where we're going to end the mission. So let's see. Um, objective. Open it up. Um, let's call this one made it. All right. Just because text um, put um, drive the car here. And then you can select the color. So in this case, I want it to be blue. And then this will show up on the map. Okay. So pretty basic stuff. Um, let's see, actually, I also should not forget to reference this later on in the in the briefing, right? I have to adjust the briefing so that you can actually see, it's like, oh, I have to drive it over here and make sure that's a clickable link as well. So next thing, because um, I've already described how that works, I'm not going to show it because it just takes up too much unnecessary time. You know, it's just something I forgot to do, but you can do it yourself later on if you really need to. Um, the next important part is actually adding an Intel system for the task because you, we want a task to show up and to be assigned and all that, all that stuff. So I'll show you how to do that. And then basically the mission is finished. Um, so we're here right now. Um, I'll just select create task inside the um, systems modules and then create task. Okay. Then I want um, two task states, okay, and um, yeah, okay, that's that's okay for now. So create task. I'll open it up. Um, variable name: um, steal the car. Um, owner: synchronize objects. I, I just say all playable units. Task ID: steal car. The title is actually how it will show up in the briefing. So this has to be something like steal the car. A description of what's going on there. Steal the car from Neo Chori. Marker. I made a marker called Neo Chori, so I can just put it in there. The destination, I'm going to keep disabled, but you can say module position, which means that you will have um, a little waypoint at the... But it, we're at basically wherever you put this module on the map, okay? But in this case, the car can be in three different places. I don't need a destination because it's not going to be correct. So I'm just going to keep this set disabled. And then state created. I want this to be at the, at the very start. I just need, i just leave this like it is. And this mission actually, this is going to show up at the very start of the game, okay? So next thing, uh, set task state is um, assigned okay and one will be succeeded now the next part is important I have to connect this with sync to the player otherwise you will not see it okay and this one has to be connected there as well and this one has to be connected as well Okay, so assigned, I actually have to create two new triggers for this because I want them, I don't want this to be assigned at the same time as it's created when I start the mission. I want it to be a little bit of a delay. So I want to be, I want it to be created first and then assigned maybe five seconds after. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into triggers, move to my first starting location, trigger one, uh, just trigger without the radius. Um, this was called start one. I'll call this one start one B. Um, 
type trigger activated start one and give it a little bit of the delay and that's all we need okay so I'm going to do the same thing for the for the second start so I'm just gonna ah it didn't actually copy the right thing okay I'll just create a new one then start two so I'll call this start to B trigger activated start two and then a little bit of a delay again okay so now that we have done this I'm going to hop over to uh, the assigns task state sync to and I'll sync it to start one B right and then I'm also going to sync it to um, ah, it's over here start to B okay and this means that um, basically at the very start of the mission this task will already be created um, and five seconds after you start it will be assigned and then of course the next part is um, I want this to be okay so here's the thing I want it to be succeeded once I get into the car okay so I'm to do that I'm going to create another trigger place it here I'm gonna call it player in car and in condition I'm going to put this player in car one okay it's very simple very basic and that's all I have to do so then I select the succeeded uh, module and I sync it to this and so this means that once the player gets inside the car this objective or this task will be completed okay so the next bit that I want to do is um, okay I'm going to create two more triggers and I'll show you why later so player in card to trigger activated player in car because that was what that's what it was called first okay five then copy this turn this into three that into two so they run consecutively okay and I'll show you why because now that the player is actually in the car it would be nice to show him a waypoint where to go to actually drive the car back to where it needs to be right so I'm going to do this as well um, I'm gonna select create task let's see ah, it's over here so I'm just gonna place this inside the, um, the trigger zone where we need to go um, variable name drive here task ID drive here title drive to the to the safe zone okay drive the car to the safe zone outside of Neo Chori because I don't need to go really in depth right now um, marker let's see what did I what did I call this marker here made it right so markers made it and in this case the destination will be the module position because this time you actually have a clear direction of where you need to be and so I'll leave this as at created as well um, another set task state set task state um, so assigned and succeeded I'm going to sync them all together so sync this to that sync this to that and sync this to the player so it actually shows up so the player is over here sync it up yeah okay and then one last thing um, you can 
make this like if I leave it like this, the scenario will actually or both tasks will show up at the start of the mission, okay? But you can also change it. You can also make it different. And you can actually make sure that this task does not get created until the player gets into the car. And that's why I made us two extra triggers earlier on. So I'm going to not only sync this one to the player, I'm also going to connect it to the second trigger over here that will trigger five seconds after the player got into the car, which um, yeah, so once you get in the car, this trigger will be activated, you'll get a little pop-up, which will take a few seconds to go away. So that's why I want this one to trigger five seconds after, because otherwise they're going to get confused and turn up at the same time, okay? So that's why there's this little delay over here. And then of course it needs to be assigned as well, instead of just created, so that's why this trigger is here. So I'll just move over here again. Um, Let's see, this is the assigned, yeah. Okay, so sync to, move over here, connect it to the last trigger over there. And then finally, the succeeded state, which is this one, we will connect that to vehicle present one. So this task will finally be succeeded, or will tick off or be it will show up as succeeded once the player gets inside of here okay so that is basically everything you need to do to create a nice um, steal the car scenario so I'm just gonna save it and um, yeah let's test it out I'm not, going, I'm not going to play the entire mission of course but um Huh, that's interesting. Ah, okay, I think I know what's going on. So the player position actually shows up as a possible location to start as well, I think. So what I want to do then is to move the player to... Because the car actually did move. You know, you, we saw the car actually got moved somewhere else. It wasn't here. So this method actually works, except the player position also needs to be somewhere else. Oh, that's the wrong one. So let's see, we'll move the player over here for now, just because we can, or just move it behind there and turn him around this way, save it, scenario again. They might not actually show up in this exact location this time around, we might actually show up. Yeah, see, so I moved my player character to do a, an industrial zone, but I ended up in this garbage dump instead. So. There we go, you're in position six, now move into the town and find that car. And this means if I now actually walk over to the, um, oh yeah, I need to make sure that this gets, um, or is made invisible later on, but actually it doesn't really matter that much, like it's okay here. Um, if I actually move on to the, to the gas station over here, the other trigger doesn't work anymore because I disabled it with a script, All right? So the car is in one of the three random locations. There is patrols walking through the town. Um, if you walk, if you, let's see, the briefing shows up. So the situation, mission briefing, clickable link, diary of Armstrong or David Armstrong, and the task. So the first task is steal the car. And the task that tells you to drive over here is not actually created until I find the car. Okay, so I'll show you that as well. I'm just gonna cut to the to the point where I find actu actually find the car. I'm not going to record the entire thing, but I'll be back in a second. Okay, so I actually found. Oh shit! Ah oh, man, I tried this one one time before I got shot here. I had to start over. Ah, there he is. Ah, he's dead. Okay, that should be the last guy in this area, because I know I got a two-man patrol over here as well. Um, so yeah, I'm going to hop into the car. We'll see the, the task being completed. And now the next one should be created. Drive to the safe zone. It's actually a little typo. Now it's assigned. And now it actually tells me where I need to go.
So, right, I gave myself a personal waypoint. I'm just going to leave that. So you can see, made it. Ah, okay. I have to change it a little bit because I can see that the the name of the marker is actually used as the name of the the waypoint now, which I don't want because made it doesn't make any sense. Only makes any sense as a reference. Oh, <laughs> bye. Goodbye. Oh, there's another guy over here. Oblivious. <laughs> All right. So I'm gonna drive to the to the safe zone. And then I'll actually I forgot to tell something about the editor as well. That's it did change it around on me, so I have to get used to this as well. But um. It's actually kind of a small thing, but uh, anyway, I ha actually had fun playing this mission, even though it was very quickly made. So I've decided I'm going to upload this to the Steam Workshop. I'm going to make a few small changes. So I'm going to make the the marker and the town invisible. I'm going to reference the marker here at the safe zone in the briefing, which wasn't done before. Um, I'm going to change my secondary spawn, little things like that. But um, that's it. You know, then I'm going to upload this so people can play it. There will be an example version as well that I'm going to upload so people can download that and see how I actually set all of this up and copy from it as they need. Um, so yeah, there you go. A basic, um, basic, basic steal the car mission. Okay, so <laughs> there's one last thing that I have to talk about in this video, and it's the attributes up here. So. Attributes has um, four different categories. Multiplayer, which I don't need to touch right now because it's single player mission. I don't actually really make that many multiplayer missions and it's almost like in a completely different discipline that requires a lot more code and stuff like that. Um, garbage collection, however, could be, could be useful in single player. It's basically, um, if you make a mission where a lot of uh, AI has to be respawned or like new groups keep coming in um, the bodies stay behind you know the the game doesn't actually collect the dead the, the dead bodies and that's what garbage collection is so if you use this this will I think basically remove uh, dead bodies every once in a while or all of them or whatever so that's kind of advanced as well you don't really need to touch it what we do need to talk about a little bit is like the environment and the general setting. So environment is pretty basic. It's just uh, the date, the, the time of the day. Um, now the date, you might actually think that the date doesn't really do much. It actually kind of does. It, um, it influences the, the t at what time it gets dark. So the later in the year, like closer to winter, it will get dark earlier. All right, it's a very cool little detail. Um, and then you've got all your weather settings, so weather forecast, if it's going to rain or not, how long it takes to take, um, how long it takes for the, the change in weather to take place, if it's cloudy or not, if it's foggy, rainy, if there's lightning, the, the size of the waves, and you can manually override all of these things as well, which is really awesome. Um, wind as well, so there's a lot of things that you can, um, that you can control with with wind but um, I'm okay with just leaving it at the default settings because I like sunny days you know that's quite good but then um, the last thing is the general settings and this is I believe um, if you go to the main menu you have the scenario tab and I think this is where you put in the description that shows up there so the description ext had all the loading file information or for the loading screen information. This would be the scenario description in the scenario menu. So you yeah, have to fill this in, you know, keep in mind the offer, the title of your mission, a little overview description text. You could add pictures if you want. Um, but this is also an important part because this is where you control the allegiance of the independent faction. So right now I've set independent to being at war with both NATO and CSAT. But you can you can change it to being in alliance with both of them, or just at war with one of them, or you know whatever you want. So, yeah, it's good to remember that it's under the attributes 
and general tab. And then finally, one thing is um, the last thing is to binarize the scenario file. So what this does is it well, it, it does exactly what it says. It binarizes the the SQM the mission .sqm file into it's basically uneditable in the editor in, or in the text editor but it helps save on load time so your mission actually loads faster when this when the mission.sqm is binarized but you can't actually edit it anymore but like i said earlier you don't usually have to edit anything in the mission.sqm as far as i know because it has all the um, information about all the units that are placed all the waypoints that they have to follow and all that kind of stuff it's not really something you want to mess around with too much so for the most part i leave this on you know i don't do much of it and it helps people um, get into the mission faster so yeah and finally that's the end of this video <laughs> i'm not going to do anything else after this however um I do want to make another video that will go up shortly after this one about adding custom sound. And we already discussed a big part of how it works, but um, yeah, it's going to. This is already a very long video, so it's going to be a short video after this where I explain what programs you could use to create your own .ogg sound files, how to put them in the description.ext again for good measure i already kind of explained how that works it's not very complicated and then i'll show you how you can get those sounds to be played in the game All right so see you then